Hello, this is Dr. Dean. Today, I will talk about allergy in the eyes. I live in the New England area, and pollens are really bad for the past few weeks. The most affected tissue in the eye is the conjunctiva, or the white part of the eye. This is the tissue that gets red, swollen, and very, very itchy. What is allergic conjunctivitis? Is it the same as eye allergies? Let's first see what is conjunctiva. Conjunctiva is a thin, translucent mucous membrane tissue covering the white part of the eye, as well as the inner side of the eyelid.、Uh, the white one that you can see is called the bulbar conjunctiva, and one line in the inner eyelid is called the palpebral conjunctiva, as labeled、uh, on this figure. This is a tissue rich in immune reaction-related cells, such as antigen-presenting cells, Langerhans cells, and allergy-mediated cells, such as mast cells. It also contains goblet cells, which produce mucin, and this is why conjunctiva is easily affected by allergy and produces eye discharge in inflammation. So, eye allergy is not only allergic conjunctivitis. But a majority of the eye allergies happen in this tissue. In an allergic reaction, the mast cells in the conjunctiva will release histamine and other factors which cause edema or swelling, blood vessel dilation or redness, and itchiness. We sometimes refer allergic conjunctivitis to eye allergies for this reason. Technically, though, conjunctivitis describes inflammation of the conjunctiva and allergic. Conjunctivitis、uh, describes the cause、uh, of the infl- inflammation. What are the symptoms of allergic conjunctivitis? The hallmark is itchiness. As the allergens trigger an allergic reaction on the surface of the eye, histamines are released from ma- by mast cells, causing intense itchiness, but also fluid accumulation, which is the swelling,、uh, tearing, and protein secretion. And this is the tearing and discharge, and conjunctiva blood vessel dilation, which causes the eyes to become red. Often, people have itchy and runny nose with sneezy and stuffy nose as well. In some people, especially young kids, their eyelid skin can puff up, and rubbing eyes makes a quick relief, but makes everything worse actually. Ah,、uh, so what? What's the cause of allergic conjunctivitis? People can be allergic to all sorts of things, but most environmental allergens fall into these categories: pollens, dust, mites, mold, pets, and smoke or odor. If you are known to have seasonal allergies, and、uh, it's that time of the year, and you are having red itchy eyes as well as stuffy nose, it is not difficult to diagnose allergic reaction or allergic conjunctivitis. The treatment, though, may not be that easy. Because we are always exposed to the air where allergens abound, if you are allergic to pets, then you may be able to stay away from them, but not air. When avoidance fails, we have to use medication. The good old oral antihistamines such as Claritin or Zyrtec are of great help, though sometimes、uh, they don't really always control the itchy eyes. So here come the eye drops. For mild allergic conjunctivitis, simple artificial tears may effectively flush away the allergens and soothe a hot eye. You can see my other video on dry eye on how to select the right artificial tear for you. Cold compress with ice pack or cold towel is quite effective in quenching that itchy sensation.、Uh, this is a good replacement of bad behavior, which is rubbing. In addition, allergy eye drops can also directly inhibit histamine and stabilize mast cells in the conjunctiva. The higher concentration achieved on the eye makes them more effective than oral antihistamines. There are two OTC or over-the-counter allergy eye drops, ketodifen and olipatidine. The latter was just recently FDA approved as over-the-counter. I am sure these are expensive, but they are quite effective. And now you don't need to go to a doctor's office to get a prescription to get these medications. So we talked about what over-the-counter drops can be used to treat allergic conjunctivitis. Now let's look at what drops you should not be using for the long term. 
Visine Red Eye is a very popular eye drop because it takes away the redness very quickly. That is because it contains a vasoconstrictor, which shrinks your conjunctival blood vessels. But used over long term, this can actually make red eyes worse. So while it is okay to use for the short term to make your eyes look better quickly, it is not recommended to be used long term. For example, if you're going to use it four times a day for months, that's not good. Remember, your eyes are red because of allergy or dry eye. So when the allergy and dry eye are controlled, the redness will also resolve. Although、uh, it'll take some time for this to occur. For some people who don't have allergy or dry eye yet still have redness that needs to be controlled in the long term, they may try another over-the-counter eye drop called Lumify. Studies have shown that unlike Visine, Lumify does not cause rebound redness. In cases where the over-the-counter eye drops and oral antihistamines do not control your eye allergies, your eye doctor may prescribe stronger medications to you. Steroid drops work very well to quench inflammation. However, used long term, these drops can cause significant eye side effects, including increased eye pressure and cataract. The basic principle for using these drops is to use the least amount possible, but never stop the medication cold turkey. For example, your doctor may ask you to use the drops four times a day for a week, and when you feel much better after a week, you should not be stopping it altogether. Rather, you should follow your doctor's advice to taper the medication slowly. Stopping steroid drops suddenly may cause the inflammation to come back again. FML and Lodamax are two milder、uh, steroid drops, whereas prednisolone acetate is quite strong. Depending on your symptoms and history, you may be prescribed one versus the other. Lastly, for some patients whose eye allergies are not controlled well with steroids, or those who get worse once steroids are tapered and stopped, restasis can be considered. Remember, in my dry eye lecture, I talked about restasis being FDA approved for dry eye. Its mechanism of action is to reduce inflammation. For some allergic conjunctivitis, restasis works very well, and it is safe to be used long term, unlike steroids. In addition to regular allergic conjunctivitis, there are several specific entities of allergic conjunctivitis.、Uh, these are unfortunately not that common. These include giant papillary conjunctivitis, vernal conjunctivitis, and atopic conjunctivitis. Some of the following images may cause discomfort, so watch out at your own discretion. You are warned.、Uh, here's giant papillary conjunctivitis. It often happens in those who wear contact lenses. It is thought that the mechanical rubbing of the lens to the eyelid, and/or the components of the contact lens itself. Or deposits and solution on the contact lens are the chronic stimuli to cause this papillary reaction. Certainly, this does not happen with everyone who wears contact lenses, but it can happen to any contact lens wearer, and can happen any time during their contact lens wear. If this happens, you will have red, itchy, and painful eyes. Your doctor will ask you to discontinue contact lens wear until your condition improves. If you do go back to contact lens wear, it is recommended that you switch from multi-purpose solution to hydrogen peroxide-based ones, such as ClearCare, or switch to daily disposable lenses, which will have the least deposits and does not require using solutions. Vernal conjunctivitis happens often in young kids. They will have intense itch and light sensitivity.、Uh, the disease usually resolves after puberty. But prior to that, symptoms can be severe, and may involve the cornea, such as shown in the image. You can see on the arrow points to some white dots. These are collections of degenerated eosinophils and epithelial cells. They may also be a be a corneal ulcer called shield ulcer. These patients need to be followed closely to control the conjunctival and corneal inflammation. Atopic conjunctivitis is often associated with atopic dermatitis and asthma. It is a chronic inflammatory ocular condition、uh, that may involve the cornea as well. 
these need to be controlled, sometimes even with systemic treatment. So in summary, allergic conjunctivitis is very common. Try to avoid allergens if possible. Try over-the-counter treatments to control your symptoms. Make sure to call your eye doctor though if you don't get good relief. That's it. I hope you never suffer from allergies like I do. And have a great day. Bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe and like us. And feel free to post questions and comments down below. For more educational articles about the eyes and health of the eyes, uh, please visit our website at www.bostoneyeblink.com and contact us with um, at email or leave a message on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.